Once the satellite construction has been completed and it's been completely tested and is passing all of the tests, we get to the fun part, which is being able to get it ready to launch. But before we can do that, we have to do a couple of things first. So the first step is, is to get the satellites actually there. Now, this is the Goz Goer, Gozer satellite being transported first by plane and then by truck to its final destination uh, before launching. But you can notice a couple of things. Notice this box that this is in. This is a temperature controlled and an environment controlled box. You want to make sure that you're not going to overheat any parts of the satellites beyond their storage temperature while it's in transit. It could be a very dangerous time. You also want to make sure that you're not going to have any debris or anything. You want it to be at least as clean as the environment in which you built it. So it's pretty common to have satellites be in a pure nitrogen environment, for instance, when they're in transit, because nitrogen is a very inert gas and relatively cheap as well. So it can be quite useful. So, okay, you've got your satellite to the satellite processing facility. What do you need to do there? Well, there are three main things that you'll need to do there. Well, four. First is, is you'll do just some initial testing to make sure that nothing broke in transit. The next thing you'll do is to fuel it up with whatever kind of, of fuel that you're using. Now, if you're going to use anything that's remotely dangerous, such as hydrazine or any kind of rocket fuel, you'll have to fuel it up at the site. If you're using a pure inert gas, such as xeon or or nitrogen, compressed nitrogen, then you might be able to fill it up at your location where you set it. But most of the time you need something to fill up. This is uh, one of the ATV vehicles that the ESA built. It's headed its own way to, to the ISS. And they're filling it full of hydrazine right now, which anybody that's in the area, hydrazine is a very, very nasty gas. You can see this almost spacesuit type thing that they're wearing in order to be safe while filling it because even a small amount can cause some serious damage. Next, you'll have to make sure that you have anything that is removed before flight removed. Now, this is obviously an airplane, but satellites have removed before flight things too, such as sensitive sensors, or they'll have battery plugs that need to be changed out into the flight version where they are continually being cycled instead of being uh, charged to the ground. And stuff like that, you just have to make sure that it's in a flight configuration. Even the most simple of CubeSats will have a remove before flight pin to make sure that its batteries are actually connected up because you don't want to be powering the spacecraft by accident. And so therefore you can have this remove before flight pin until it's loaded safely in the, the capsule. Next, You'll want to mount it to whatever kind of ring that you're you're using, your launch ring. You can see this is the launch ring that this particular satellite is being launched on. This is a Cygnus space capsule that's being launched to resupply the International Space Station. So you get it mounted in there, then you will encapsulate it. Now, most of the time, the encapsulation will be provided by the rocket company. In fact, that's almost always the case. And then you are ready to launch. You could, no matter what kind of silly payload you have, it'll be in some kind of a mount adapter. And this, of course, is Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster. But you can see that it's clearly mounted to this this uh, payload adapter fairing and uh, mounted inside of the, the fairing to protect it while it's being launched into space. Once it's mounted in the fairing, there's still... Your work isn't done. You'll have to carefully monitor the battery voltage, and they will provide ways to do this. Now, if you have a CubeSat, you're not going to be able to do this. The CubeSats are not connected up to the satellite in any way, usually. But for larger satellites, they are connected, and you will want to make sure that the batteries are topped off and ready for launch to the launch site or launch to space. So... Okay, you have everything set to go. You'll participate in whatever kind of test. If they do a static fire like Falcon 9 does or whatever kind of test they do, you'll participate in them and make sure that everything's okay. And then finally, you get to launch it into space. 
And then we enter into the next phase of operations, which is the, the initial on-orbit checkout phase. But we'll talk about that in the future. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey. Let me know whatever questions or comments you have. And until next time, keep on tracking. This is Ben Pearson, the Roadster Tracker.